Hi, I'm so glad you visited my channel. Hi, I'm Crystal, and I'm with Creations by Crystal, as you know. And today we're going to do something completely different. I came up with the idea of using a joint compound, which AB Creative used, and I was amazed. I thought that was such a brilliant idea. Um, I didn't know exactly how I wanted to use it, but today I decided this is what I was going to do for fun. I'm going to mix a little collaging uh, using Mod Podge, just the mat, some dry decks spackling. Um, this is vellum paper that I drew a pumpkin on. And here is the tissue paper that I thought that I would use as a collage around the pumpkin. Okay, keep your fingers crossed. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Let's start with first the basics, okay? The reason that I draw on a vellum piece of paper is so that when I have my canvas, I can move it around to see where I want to place it, okay? And there's the, the uh, just with a heavy pencil, I, I use um, this kind of a pencil, Amazon Basic 3B. It's a deep pencil, and it, it will do what I'm going to show you. So after you've drawn your pumpkin, draw the lines heavy with the pencil. You turn it over and find wherever it is that, that you want your pumpkin, in my case, right here kind of lining it back because I've already done it take something sharp your nail whatever it is and all you do is do that okay and you do that through all your lines etc all right and what you'll get ta -da, is your image right there on your canvas now if some of it didn't come through like you like just use a, your pencil and come in and uh, wherever it's not dark enough for you to see just uh, take the pencil and help it out a little but uh, this came out pretty good so I just want to bring in these lines because I want to make the joint compound very textured okay so you've got your image on the canvas right hope I'm in good vision yes okay so we're done with our little stencil I keep my stencils you never know if you want to make another one so I save them next uh, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next um, I think what I'm going to do next is use the tissue paper in a collage manner this was just a tissue paper I believe I got it at the Dollar Tree um, it's a pretty uh, teal uh, mixture of colors and circles which I really liked so let us get us a sheet of it out and you simply looks like you just unfold it and you want to get it this one now some tissue papers have a, a double lining on it that you'd have to pull off now this one does not so I thought that was pretty good so I think I'm gonna cut me a piece about that big so let's do that doesn't have to be perfect. You're just getting yourself some to use and to cover around the pumpkin. And we'll get it cut here in a minute. This may be way, way too much, but I'll say whatever I don't use. And there's plenty in here too, I tell you. They give you a lot. So, let me just kind of fold that up. I'm gonna, if we need more, we can get more, but I think this is way too much and plenty. So, stick it in here. 
Maybe not. Maybe not now. But I've unwrapped. See, it doesn't want to go in. Does it maybe go this way, huh? Yeah, that was a little smarter. Okay, so that's saved. If we need more, we've got more. Now you're seeing the back side of it right now, so it's kind of dull. So, that is the color. Isn't that pretty? I thought that'd be really pretty against an orange pumpkin with lots of texture. So we're going to do a little collaging. And when you're collaging, you know, I've done just a little bit of it. I'm not a uh, person that does a lot of it at all. I just know just a little bit about it. Um, tear you off pieces, you know, different sizes depending on what, you know, you're looking for. Like I might do that right there at that corner. Okay. Um, now, to get it to adhese, I'm using Mod Podge Matte. Okay, and uh, we'll use our spackling after. So let's get started. Open your Mod Podge up. This is a brand new one. I've not used the matte because I always usually use a, a gloss. But in this case, I just uh, it's a glue, and we're simply, maybe I better shake it up. Um, it's just a glue, and I don't want that to be the star of the show just the background. Okay, gave it a good shake. Put my pencil away. Reopen. Okay, so what you do is you put your glue. Let me get a brush here that I don't mind using with it. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What do I got? What do I got? Tons of brushes, but good ones. <laughs> don't want to mess them up. Let me, I'm still looking for one that might be appropriate size and one that uh, I don't mind uh, getting some glue on. Yeah, that might work. Okay, I'm going to pick a brush, okay? This is new. I have not done this uh, before. And I'm going to put an ample amount, actually on to where I'm going to put a piece of that tissue paper and I will put it under and then I'm going to put it over the paper. You want yourself a good amount. Like that. Oh. If you get a little hair, get it out with me. I don't know where that came from, but my dog, most likely. <laughs> All right, let's get that down here. I'm not so sure how far the paper. All right, so we got some of that. Now take your paper and lay it where you placed your glue. Okay, give it a little push, a little help, and I will, this part will be, I'll either do the side, I haven't decided whether the sides need covered or not, so for now, we're going to just leave it like that. Then come back over the top of that paper with your Mod Podge again, and give it a good layer. On there so it's kind of like collaging you know I think a lot of people know what collaging is but if you don't it's basically tearing up pieces of paper maybe music old music um, that kind of stuff that kind of stuff all right we've got a good coat there okay let's get us another piece of paper just gonna tear some and see where it will work. Uh, where were you going to work? A little piece of paper here. Let's see. Now that's a little. I want to make good use of it. How about this corner here? Yeah. 
All right, so we're going to add us our glue right here. Careful not to, I don't want to cover the pumpkin. So give it a spread. I'm going to do a little bit on the side here too. There we go. And then take your paper. And how did I have it? Let's see. Like that. All right. Careful because it will wrinkle, but it doesn't matter if it wrinkles because that gives texture. That's what I'm looking for too. Color and texture. I did not want to use paint this time. So I came up with this idea. If we're going to use joint compound on a pumpkin, <laughs> why not do a little collaging too? So that's what we're doing. Then this goes on top. Then I'm kind of smoothing a little bit on the sides because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. We'll figure that out in the end. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Just going to keep repeating that process. And let's see. Let's do another maybe smaller hair the paper this time let's see where that yeah that might land just fine right there all right let's get us our glue oops drop some on our pumpkin we don't want that comes right off with your finger and then you got your little paper towel I hope there okay being shy with it and back let's see had it yeah I guess I had it like that didn't I Maybe I'll go all the way up with that. Why not? It naturally fell that way, so let's just let it do that. And that covers that edge good. Okay. Alright, that's not so hard. This is my first time doing this, by the way. I have seen others do collages that turn out really beautiful. Oops. Moving the canvas around on you. Let's get this little edge over. Just like that. And yes, this one did overlap that one, but it, it shouldn't matter. Alright, let's get us another tear. Okay, what do I want to do here? No, I don't like that. Well, I can't do that either. Now, I may have to be a little bit, hmm, let's see, to get around this pumpkin without covering the pumpkin. Tear this a little bit more smaller, maybe a smaller piece to try to make it around that stem. Pretty good. That's not bad. I don't want 
remove it since I placed it so good. And get us some glue under there. Or Mod Podge. There we go. And again over the edge. smaller piece worked a little better. That's what I'll do on the next one. Okay, uh, let's see here. There's a little piece here. And I've got I think, plenty of glue there, yes. Gotta just lay that over. Keeping the shape of the pumpkin. That's what I'm trying to do. Oops, I'm out of. Because I'm not sure how I'm going to do the edges. Or the, yeah, the edges. So, just going to let it fold over on itself and we've got another little piece right there that needs to have some coverage come back here come back here we'll just do him kind of on you know kind of given some texture by going over the other pieces too. That's kind of cool. Can't see what I'm doing over there. I hope <laughs> you guys can. Alright, that's good. Now let's give this funny little curve here an attempt of covering it without covering the stem and also to cover the pumpkin. Let's see how good I can do that. Okay, oops, okay. About that, it's pretty close, pretty close. The spackle, when I come in with that on the pumpkin, should be all right. Okay, and then on the top, again, And I can see like little pieces there. We'll tear some and put some on that as well. And I'm thinking I do want the edges done, but I'm not sure. Okay. We've got Mod Podge on. I'll figure out that corner later. There's just a little piece there that I want to cover. interesting the circles and then the you know all right glue stuck all over me let's see let's try another tiny piece because I'd like it a little bit better here if I don't lose my paper come back There we go. That's better, right? And Mod Podge the top again. That's all you do. Now I need a little piece for in there. Kind of a corner, maybe. Let's tear another little piece. Let's see if I can't get that part. My 
hands are shaking. Whenever I do something new, I'm a little nervous about it. Okay. Then podge the top. Then we've got now the stem that is covered. Okay. That's good. All right. Let's look at down here. And I'm thinking... that big for down here. Yes, that kind of is round. Alright. A little easier for me to see the edges here. That'll determine whether I cover the edges with the uh, the tissue paper or not. Place it. And then again on top. Yeah, that worked good, right? here on the side just kind of hanging okay now we're going to work our way around da, 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 da. I just don't know I'm just going to tear a piece and try to figure it out yeah I'm going to go right in there this curve love so glue on there. If you get it on your pumpkin, it kind of, you, know, you can use your nails if you've waited, if you've dripped like me. There we go. Good. That works. See? Right around that pumpkin. this paper down so that this paper will adhere. I'm pretty liberal with the uh, Mod Podge. I don't think it matters. But, like I said, this is the first time I've ever done it. So, it was an idea. I was getting tired of doing my paint pours and my Australian flow trials on back order so I can't do blooms or anything. So I wanted to do something different and this came to me. Okay, now we get this little bit to cover there. Uh, goodness, I'm just gonna tear a piece again. I, no method to my madness other than to, yeah, that'll fit right in there. Line the pumpkin, because then we're going to do the uh, joint compound. So on the side, all right, let's see if I can't get that. I wanted that. There we go. And on top again. I'm hoping you have the time to see all this. Because I'm not cutting out, you know, and then coming back with it done. I just thought, let's uh, do it together, you know. Something new for you, maybe give you an idea 
this is definitely just something I wanted to make for Halloween decoration. So, I thought I put glue there. Let's see, did I? Yes. Not enough under there. Nope, you can't flip that way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Got to go this way. Alrighty. I've got that down. Oh. <laughs> yes, and moving myself right out of frame. Sorry, guys. I'm dropping the paper back to me please thank you we've got only one more piece to go I'm gonna try this piece here and see if any of it will yeah that'll be all right let's get us our glue on there piece for that, but that's okay. That should create interest. I'm thinking, you know, texture. And we didn't want it just perfect. I want it jumbled. It's Halloween. And if you're like me, I like Halloween. <laughs> that I stuck. Yeah, I'm liking the way the sides look with it, so I'll, I'm going to come back probably and uh, do the sides too. So we just need a little piece for here. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Again with the Mod Podge. Pretty simple. I, d I never got into it though, you know. It, it's, some people really love it doing collage, and I just never did it. Saw it, know how to do it a little bit, and uh, decided today that that was what we were going to do. Something different. And I'm back out of frame again. Think. There. Okay. Are you in? Are you, can you see? I wish you could talk back to me. Okay, now we've got our pumpkin covered. Okay. Let me give us a stop and think because now we have some edges that need some help. If I'm, since I'm going to, I've decided to go ahead, I think, and cover the bottoms or the sides, excuse me. Put a little piece right there. And this is great tissue paper, too. I didn't have to... It wasn't a two-ply or anything, which... That's because it's probably the Dollar Tree. <laughs> but, works for me. All right, that looked good. Ooh, I like that. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. What do y'all think? Keep going. Cover the sides. I think the sides need covered. I do. I really do. So I'm going to lift this up gently. All these big pieces here that didn't adhere to the very bottom of the side. And put some glue or Mod Podge. 
leave each layer over it just like that that way that can go back down and adhere it real well to the to the side you got to be careful I just noticed I kind of pulled a little bit harder on the paper after it had already been uh, adhered and not dried and it kind of tore a little bit so that would be something to be aware I need to turn this so without getting too much glue on my fingers and let's get this corner Easter land guys lift the layers up so that you can get that edge I guess it's kind of the best way I can think of doing it and then that will piece down and let's get that corner piece down and then we got this piece so it's like three layers right there for the side we will hope that works just like that I'm going to make you work you are going to work whether you like it or not back and we'll cut from the bottom so that nothing's sticking out like it is now. I'm always worried about the time and you guys going, oh you're taking so long. So I worry about that. If that's a worry for you, leave a comment about it. Be glad to adjust my way of doing things to make you more happy and help you to maybe get inspired to do something weird like I'm doing right now. I'm really wanting that to stick, so I'm just kind of sticking that paper underneath the canvas. Ah, sort of. Sort of. But it's got glue, and I don't want to do that. I'm using my hands, getting very glued up here. Stay. Stay, stay, stay. It doesn't matter if there's a wrinkle. I don't yeah, I think that will give us texture. Which is what we want. I don't want it sticking to my fingers. I think I'm gonna take a baby wipe for just clean my fingers a little bit here. Because that does look pretty around the edges, doesn't it? Yes, it looks finished. Finished and good. Okay, still in frame. Just going to wipe. I should have put maybe a paper towel under here, but I got wax paper. So that'll be fine. Alright, just for my fingers at least. Alright, let's get back to it. Then we get to the fun part of spackling. That's going to be fun. That'll be my first time trying spackle on a canvas. So that'll be fun. Okay. 
Okay, I don't know if you can see or not, but it's a bit of a struggle for this eye, I won't lie. But it's going to work. I'm going to make it work. Now we got this little corner. And glue everywhere. But that's okay. You don't get messy. If you don't like getting messy, you get you're not you can't be an artist. <laughs> I literally have clothes only that I use for painting. They're my paint clothes because I always make a mess. Starting to stick a little bit. And the corners are our biggest devil. There we go. That's down. And around. And we may have to add some tissue paper to the sides over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. down and give it a good cover there especially that edge that wants to keep popping up just shove it underneath the canvas with some glue that's working good okay and I need to put a piece oops pulled that out well, that was smart or not smart Get under there and stay and, and dry. Just dry. All right, now let me get another little edge. Because this did not get any paper over here. Yeah, okay. The sides, I'm calling it the edge. Sides, whatever you want to call it. or side or whatever we want to call it and stick the rest of it up underneath and hoping that when I can that I'm going to come back I believe and then just simply trim it off after it's dried I think that's going to be our best best method if I don't my sticky fingers pull it out there we go and you're out of frame again. Sorry, guys. Moving around to this edge. Okay, let's see here. Yeah. And you definitely gotta like to collage. I mean, this takes a little bit of patience, I will say. Tedious, I guess, and, and uh, people that do collages do very tedious, cool stuff, using all kinds of stuff, music, old music, they paper they find, or old books, they're yellowed, they use that, get it at thrift shops, you can get books and tear out pieces of, of old stuff that was already ruined, you know why it's at the thrift shop and uh, trying to figure out a way to turn this so that I'm not too glued because we've got this side to do and that's it this side and then we're gonna let it kind of dry a little bit and you won't know that I'll pause it while it dries and then come back and we will 
do our spackling. That's gonna be interesting. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna spackle on top of a canvas. That is so bizarre. But it's gonna give texture to the pumpkin. Hoping I can do that. And it should look pretty cool. Different, something different. Something nobody else is doing, you know? It seems like everybody's doing the blooms and stuff like that and having trouble getting the Australian flow trial because of it being on back order and so many people doing it. They're using, trying recipes with the uh, American flood flow trial that works best with Amsterdam paint, believe it or not. <laughs> You can't just use your regular, I use Arteza paint, uh, acrylic paints. I don't have any Amsterdam paints, they're very expensive. But somebody discovered that they work the best with, uh, ooh, sticky. Okay, come back. Are you in there? Okay. Oh, wait, let's see. You need to get stuck under there, too. Well, let me take a look at it. What's going on over there? If I can get over there without too much. Problem there. See what we got going on. Okay, we got some lifting. use actually. Let's just uh, push it in there. Good. Yeah, that works better. And then I'll come back and we'll trim all that up after it's dry. If, I can, if it'll release. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, canvas is moving all out of y'all's sight. Okay, where's my baby wipe? I need that. No, that glue will affect the spackling because I've never done it. Or this, I've never collaged. I might put another layer <coughs> quickly. On what has dried. Especially those sides and corners. I guess you, if they pop up, I can just re glue it down. So, shouldn't worry too much. Okay. Definitely want it where I started. But I wondered if you noticed how pretty it's looking. The parts that were dry that I didn't just come and re wet with glue. But it's beautiful teal blues and light teal and dark teal. And I think that's going to look great with an orange pumpkin. Because after we, after I do it up with the uh, joint compound, there's going to be ridges. I want ridges and, you know, a textured pumpkin like it's an actual pumpkin. Then we're going to paint it. Then we're going to do a little gold highlights on the raised element that I'm going to do with the spackling. That's the plan. Okay. There you go. Kind of see what's going on. Everybody, I hope. And uh, I'm going to put you on pause till it uh, dries. Okay, we are about to start. I wanted to... I originally got something wrong the spackling I called it um, what I want is a joint compound and I have some and it's in this big container that my husband had bought me so it's brand new and I wanted to show it to you so you know what I'm using it's big and kind of heavy and we are going to make it into or on a pumpkin. It's going to become a pumpkin. And I've got a couple of tools. 
right here and I'm not sure which one is going to work. I, I might end up with a popsicle stick. Who knows? Okay, this is dried. I think, let's see, can you see it really well? Isn't that pretty, the collage around it? I think so. Dried really nice. It's a little, it's still a little bit damp on places, but I can, can begin putting on the joint compound. That's next. Okay, here we go. That's a big jug to be pulling out of, so I made myself a little palette and put some joint count compound on it. Uh, not sure if you're gonna, that's not a most important really to see. Oh, I'm kind of nervous. I'm not sure how this is gonna, gonna work here. We're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna start with this little palette knife and um, start. See if I can't uh, do this. It's very soft. Yeah, very, very soft. And you can kind of move it. That's good. I want a, ra a raised edge. First time for me doing this, so I hope y'all are enjoying it, and that you give it a try. I'd love to see any pictures if you try it and you have success. That would be awesome. Okay. That's my dog. I don't know why he's barking. <laughs> She's had her dinner. Haven't you, Bella? Yeah, very smooth to work with. Not bad. Try to get the roundness of that pumpkin. is good. Okay. Wow. Just have fun. Something very different. I'm excited to see how it all turns out. It takes a couple of hours to dry. But you'll see everything after it's dried and painted and we'll paint it together. Excuse me. One second. All right. Let's uh, keep going. That looks good. Okay. Very soft. Very soft. Ah, I love it. Fun. Fun. Fun to do something different. Challenging. That little palette, I, I recommend that instead of digging it out of the big uh, gallon container. This little knife seems to be, or this little pallet knife seems to be doing a good job. Trying to get up underneath there. Underneath the stem. Get us a little more. See, I might have to move it a little bit like this. Wanting to make. 
take that edge of the pumpkin and then we'll come back and make the pumpkin lines this is my plan Get around there for the bottom of the pumpkin. There we go. Now we've got our edge, and of course a pumpkin needs some more here in the middle. And I want to try to do the lines of the pumpkin once I get it covered to the right thickness. It's looking good. I don't know. What do y'all think? I'm trying to do the raised up areas. Without hitting that paper. Maybe I need to flatten that a little bit. Okay. I'm so afraid of messing it up. never done this. This is crazy, isn't it? There you go. Good. I'd like a little more ridge over here. Let me see if I can do that. Very interesting. I might mess with it too much. Let me turn it around to me again. Okay, looks good. I missed just a little bit down here. Let's see if I can get that to be a raised area. Cover the 
of paper. There we go. Interesting. How cool. How cool. All right, now we got a stem here to worry about. Let's see how I'm going to do this guy. Let me get my head in the way. If I do, I apologize. thinner or smaller area I don't want to get it on the paper A smaller tool, I think. Hmm. Or maybe something on the edge. Okay, good. Sort of. Having a little hard time with this one. Part. Okay, good. Better. this rounded edge little blob will do it maybe it is so soft and pliable no idea how I was going to do it I'm still not really like it. Um, hmm. I'd like maybe these a little more defined in the middle of the pumpkin. Let's see what I can do with that. This is so fun. So fun. I hope that you like art like me and I hope it inspires you to try something new that you've never done because it's a lot of fun. Not worrying about paint pouring and blooms and cells and all that stuff. This is fun. There we go. I, we've got a pumpkin, so I just want that line to be a little bit better. Not sure how to. There we go. How to make a, a raised line? Sort I guess like that. Learning as I go. Yeah, I'm just, I think it's, I think it's there. Oh, no, not, not really, not at the, not right at the stem. That stem's given me a, a bit of a go. We don't want the tissue paper edge to show. I want the pumpkin stem to show. It's better, I think. No, still not over enough. Okay. Okay, that's a way to make a line, isn't it? Oh, 
Oh, okay. That's how you make a line. Use the edge. And lift up. Press and lift. Press and lift. Huh. Cool. I'll be coming up with some more stuff. I'll be using this again, guys. Some reason this side I'm a little I'm shaking. There we go. Okay. Lots of texture. We've got a little more defining here. That needs done. Oops, got a little out of my line. Let me see if I can. There we go. <coughs> Let me get a baby wipe out. Because I don't want it to stay on that paper. Okay, that worked. We got a pumpkin. Then I'm going to come through. We're going to paint it. And then I want to highlight it with gold. Okay. I think I'm done, guys. What do you think? I don't want it too smooth or anything. Because, you know, pumpkins have bumps and lumps. Okay, there we go. A couple hours to dry, and we will be back to and paint it. Yeah, that looks better. That looks better. Okay, can't think of anything else to do. Uh, canvas doesn't need wiped. I didn't get anything on anything. Just wipe my little metal palette. That's what I used. In case somebody wants to try it. This is a, was an excellent tool. I did have the silicone ready in case I uh, to stick in case I needed that. And then a plastic. <clears throat> Maybe on different things it would work. But I like the way this gives me lines. Gives me the pumpkin lines, everything. We're, we're there. We are there. So, two hours won't be nothing but a blink of an eye for you. Okay, guess what? Finally dry. Uh, look at that. How about that? Dry. Now, that took an hour and a half to dry. Oops, I hope I didn't move it out. There we go. Um, now, here goes to the next step. Oh, let me turn my TV uh, to mute. Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, um, the next step. Remember that vellum paper where we drew the pumpkin and then we put it onto the canvas first? Well, take that vellum paper back out again and cut the pumpkin out of the center. And what you're left with is the image you know, part of the paper where the pumpkin came out. Because we ne the next step that my husband told me 
which I'm so happy he did because I do remember uh, hearing something about spray paint needing to be put on the joint compound after it was dried and I didn't know why you know what I mean and I wasn't going to do it and my husband said you know what that joint compound will uh, soak up that acrylic color and it's and it's not going to be vibrant like you're wanting you might want to put a spray varnish some varnish on it primer I happen to have kilts, we did, and block stains, etc., etc., and then you read down here uh, the primer. So we can do that. So we're just going to put a layer of primer on, let it dry another hour, and then we'll be able to come in and paint. Now see, I'm hoping I can keep that stencil good. I'm trying to think what I should do, maybe a little piece of tape. No, that doesn't really work. I think I probably just have to just go for it. Just give it a quick spray back and forth. Okay, we ready for that? We got an hour, so let's get it on there, right? I... There we go. Okay, here we are. Wait a minute. The nozzle is not working. What is that? My husband's outside. Okay, there we go, I think. Yeah, all right. Okay, and I'm gonna take a baby wipe real quick because my little stencil there, because I do not want, I didn't want anything on that paper. And darn it. It is on that paper. Well, maybe we can stick a fresh piece of paper, tissue paper right there. Huh, darn it. Let me see if I do a scrubbing. Nope, that is on there. On there, good. Ah, oh, that's a shame. The color with the teal is so awesome. But we're going to keep scrubbing at it here and I think some of it's coming off and the background's a texture anyway but the colors were so pretty and I don't want this to look like a, an overspray which is what it's looking like darn it yeah I may stick just another piece of tissue paper over that we'll let this it even got on the edges there. That sucks. And it's knocking some of my ledges off me rubbing. Yeah, I knocked some off there. Huh. I wonder if my fingernail would do it. Nope, not really. Let me try over here. Oh. No, not really. I'm going to keep scrubbing. Let's see if I can't get off some. Some's coming off. Well, first time doing something, you're going to run into stuff like this, so I might as well show it on camera and not act like I'm all perfect. Um, this is something brand new, so brand new things are going to happen. I have to make a, a better stencil, maybe out of cardboard or something. I really thought that would work, but that really spread out there so far. Oh, my goodness, yeah. I'll probably end up putting another piece of tissue paper on that towards our end. But, you know, let's look positive. We've got some primer on here that needs to dry. It's cute. Uh, everything's cute. So we'll let that dry so that it'll accept the paint good. Let's hope that isn't a total failure. And uh, I will think about this tissue paper and the removal of. I may ask. It's an oil base, I think. 
husband may know what I could do, but I don't because my baby wipes just ain't doing it. Uh, that primer, boy, that stuck right to that tissue paper tight. I mean, I've gotten some off, but not a lot. And not enough. And it's just so right around, you know. I don't know, maybe, maybe with a little bit of uh, paint, maybe I could come in, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay, we got one hour. Be back in a sec. Now what I come up with is I decided to go ahead and just, you know, take some more tissue paper and lay it over and uh, cover up that overspray. Uh, so this is drying right now. That's a Mod Podge and where the overspray is. So we learned a lesson. We don't put the background on until we are done with the joint compound and the uh, primer spray. All right. Well, lesson learned. We're waiting on this to dry. While we're waiting for the primer to dry, uh, my husband said at least an hour or so because it soaks into it and it's an oil base. Okay. So that's what we're doing. But meanwhile, uh, we got to you know get it get the right pumpkin color and so I did some mixing and I thought wow look at that color that's perfect it's gonna look great against the teal and it is a beautiful color and I'll show you the colors to use to get it and I use Arteza paints by the way uh, this is a gold and it's a, a semi-transparent, it has mica, so it, so it gives kind of a nice, um, we call it, glean uh, to the paint. And then the other uh, Arteza that I mixed with it is Scarlet Red, also a mica. And so I gently mixed the, of course, the gold and this color together. Naturally, we all know yellow and red make, you know, orange. <laughs> but I went a little different and decided to use uh, gold for sparkle and the scarlet red for some sparkle. And I think the color is perfect. So we've got that all ready to go. Oh, my pouring medium is Liquidex Pour Medium. I buy it in a large gallon. Don't buy it by the bottle. It's so expensive that way. But if you buy it by the gallon, uh, it, it I don't know, I can't do the math. But anyway, last a long time. Anyway, put a little of that in there and some Josania. And I gave it a good mix. So we're just waiting for that time to pass so that we can start our painting. We're also going to be using Burnt Umber. Also, I use Arteza paints. This is an opaque. We've got to be a little careful with the opaques because they, they tend to mute a little bit. But we're going to be okay with this Burnt Umber. I may add some Payne's Gray to it. It's for the stem, okay? And that's it. So we're still waiting, but uh, we're all ready to start. We're just about another half an hour, and uh, we are going to begin to paint this little cutie. Okay, and as you see, the extra paper that I put on the collage, you know, I just did the same. It covered up that overspray, so we learned a lesson. Uh, yeah, background last. But anyway, we, we solved the problem and we're moving forward. I think it's going to be a really pretty. Okay, half an hour be a blink of an eye for you. Okay, let's paint. <laughs> All right, I tried out a little bit, as you can see, of the uh, stem. That was ultramarine uh, brown. Uh, burnt umber, I'm sorry. Burnt umber brown. And uh, we've got our beautiful orange. And what I seem to have found that it was much easier to use a popsicle stick to apply it. 
so that's what we're doing. Isn't this fun? <laughs> Yes. Oh, I love that color. Oh, I mixed a pretty color. I want to be careful not to drip it onto the paper. I should be more careful there. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. Just gorgeous. Oh, it shimmers. Look at the shimmer. So pretty. And then I'm going to put gold as my plan around the outside. So basically, you can kind of just rake your paint a little bit. This is why I'm using a pouring medium. I didn't want to... I knew coming in just with uh, acrylic, it was not going to work. This definitely sticks to everything. <laughs> if anybody paint pours, they will know what I'm talking about. If it gets a piece on your clothes, you'll never get it out, ever. It is there forever, and it actually will seep into your skin, <laughs> which does come off. Thank goodness, if you scrub it good. All right, ooh, that's looking so party. Just so interested in how it's going to dry. And I'm kind of just drizzling it on there. Trying to be aware of where I've got uh, higher ridges so that I don't... I found that it's a little bit brittle. If you touch those high places that you made, uh, you can... It'll crumble. So I thought I'd tell you that. Notice that. Isn't this fun? I'm just loving it. This is going to be a good decoration <laughs> for Halloween. I hope I inspire somebody to make something and possibly show it to me. I'd love to see it. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. You can follow me on any of those and show me. There we go. I try to do everything fast, don't I? I want to. I want to see the end product. I want to see what I created. Yeah, the popsicle stick, it's great with the pouring medium in it. It's, there's no raking of the uh, pumpkin so that we can keep some of them raised areas, is what I'm thinking. So I'm not really scraping it, just barely. If I've got some paint, I'll move it move the paint along, but I'm not scraping the bottom. A little bit, I guess. <laughs> that was a scrape. There we go. I didn't know whether to leave the ridges in the middle and then paint them white. I haven't decided. So I've got white out on my palette as well. believe as it dries this will sink you know and uh, the ridges that I made originally should pop out that's what I'm thinking just a little tapping works because it's a very flu you know this is paint pouring so uh, it's a very fluid and it's easy to paint with. I paint my clay creations with air dry clay like birds. I've made some birds here recently you all are going to see. 
and uh, butterflies. I always paint them with the uh, poor medium liquid X. It's my favorite. And they, you know, they dry really glossy and beautiful. This should be really pretty with the mica powder that's in the paint from Arteza. It's, it was a special type of paint they put out, and I had to have it <laughs> to my husband's displeasure because I spend so much money on products. And that flow draw from uh, Australia is expensive. It's like $30, and then to have it shipped, it was it tacked on tax like to 70 bucks. So it's like, my gosh. They know they've got the product everybody wants. Uh, I ordered two. They're stock up. It might stop being made or some craziness. I doubt it, I guess, because it's so popular. But they better speed up if they only had... They, Today, when I ordered the second one, it was like 10 left or something. And I have another one that's on back order till close to November. It said, it does say it's shipped, so I don't know. Maybe I'll get lucky. Because I want to do blooms and some other things. I don't want to try to mess around with that dang American Floetrol. I tried it. I don't like it. That's just me. Okay, there we go. Try to get make sure we get those edges. I want to be out of frame for y'all again. I tend to move my paintings around. Careful here. It's original. Whoops. Yeah. No, no, no. We don't want any background of orange. getting those edges it kind of slid again to the background which I don't want let's see here if I can get that ridge without it falling onto the background That's not bad. Okay, let's check. Oh, yeah, we got the top to do, so we're switching around again, guys. There you go. I think you get a better view that way. dribble. Okay, good. Oh, this side. Turning you again, guys.
needed it, I guess. Okay, you can go back. My pumpkin looks kind of bumpity at the bottom or the side, but that's uh, I guess pumpkins are many different shapes. So I'm not going to worry about that. gold in there, or what I was going to do, but that, I think I'm going to do just that. Okay, let's take a look at it. We need a little bit more over here. I don't want to see any white. This part takes a little bit of patience, that's for sure. For me, I like to kind of do things a little faster, but. Okay, there we go. We have a pumpkin. Turn it towards you. And I'm gonna be making adjustments, I'm sure, as the paint begins to sink and I kind of see what's going on. I may come in with some highlights of uh, stuff in here, and then I wanted to outline the whole thing with gold. So all we need to do now is wait for quite a while. This, maybe one day, actually. Hmm, what should I do? I'm just curious. I'm going to just grab a little white. drag it so that on some of them high ridges so that it'll be pretty That's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling pumpkin lines. Maybe come in with some white. There you go. Yeah, that's better to the eye. Definitely like that better. Yeah, that's pretty. And what we'll do, like I said, is we're going to put some... Uh, Gold in there as well. And that's a, give it kind of a woodsy look there. That's a cue. The stem just isn't, wasn't, didn't look like it was attached quite to the pumpkin. Now it does. That looks better. Okay. That was a blast. That was what I, what do I love to do? Paint. Yes. Okay. That is beautiful. I wish I could come now with my gold, but I can't. This is going to have to dry a couple of days, so... 
we will splice the video together so that you don't, you know, so it's all one video for you. Okay, we will do that in two days. I will be back.